Tuesday, I'm starting to feel a little bit like a news reporter based on how I'm doing the intros for all of these recent videos, but I hope you do enjoy it. I'm actually at Soma Street Food Park. Soma stands for South of Market. It's a neighborhood in San Francisco. And this area used to be a very popular food truck park destination, and it still is, but for different reasons now. Because of the pandemic, a lot of the food trucks aren't here anymore. There's still a few, but they've actually converted this into a barber shop. Uh, it's called the Barber Collective. And if you saw one of my previous videos, I'm very loyal to this one barber named Tim that I've known for multiple years. He has since moved from his previous location over to this new outdoor venue. And just want to give him a shout out. He does a great job. He's got a great team of other fantastic barbers. So if you're looking to get cleaned up, I definitely recommend coming out here. They do also, like I said, have some food options. They're going to start doing some more events when they become safer, very different and fun activities such as drag shows, uh, comedy shows, maybe some trivia nights. They're gonna try to get all those things approved. So if you're looking for a nice place to just have a good time in San Francisco, I highly recommend checking this place out. But aside from all that, let's hop into a poker session that I played a couple days ago. All right, just closing things out from Lucky Chances. Started the session at 4.45. It's 12.30 now, so much later than I wanted to leave. I was planning to play a short session so that I can come back Sunday. Probably not gonna happen at this point. It's gonna get some rest. Good news is that I do have some fun and interesting hands for you. Bad news is, well, you'll see. All right, the amounts could be a little bit off in this first hand, but it is in the ballpark. It's a straddle pot. I raise it to $35 from the low jack with ace king of hearts, and the high jack puts in a three bet to $145 with another $300 back. Button jams for less, he has $60. When he gets back to me, I decide to jam. Hijack makes a pretty quick call. I table my hand before the run out, which comes ace four three, deuce seven. Hijack tables pocket kings, and the button shows king 10 off suit. So I suck out to take this first hand down. This next hand is a straddle pot, low jack limps. I call from the small blind with king six of clubs. The big blind comes in as well, and the straddler checks. Four ways to a flop of 5-4 deuce rainbow, so I flop the gutter ball with backdoor clubs. I check, big blind bets $35, the straddler calls, low jack folds, and I make the call. Turn comes a 10 of clubs, so I pick up the backdoor flush draw. I check, big blind bets $120, straddler makes the call, and I decide to just make the call here. If the straddler didn't call, I think a better play is to put in the check raise. Can still do that here in a three-way situation, but I take the conservative route, just looking to realize here. River comes, a seven of spades, so I brick out. Action actually checks through. The straddler tables four deuce off suit to take it down with two pair. So this table was looking to have some fun. We actually played with the straddle on most of the time and decided to inject a bomb pot. And that's what we have in this next one. It's eight handed, $20 each. And I have ace queen off suit and the hijack. We go to a flop of queen, queen, deuce. So I flop pretty much the nuts. When it checks to me, I fire out $50 and only the small blind calls. Turn comes a three of diamonds. He decides to check. He's got around a pot size bet left at around $300. I could go bet, bet, but since it is a bomb pot, I'm just hoping that I have cooled him off in this spot and hopefully he has an inferior queen. So with that in mind, I decide to just jam. He thinks about it for a little bit and decides to release his hand. This next hand is a straddle pot and I'm in this straddle. Hijack limps, button raises to $50. I have king queen off suit and a couple things in play here. Button can be a bit light. King queen off can be a little bit difficult to navigate out of position, particularly playing passively. And I also don't wanna lay a good price for the hijack limper to call. 
And lastly, I do block strong holdings. So with this in mind, I decided to raise it up to $200. Hijack quickly gets out of the way. Button tanks for a little bit and decides to fold. So take this one down. Got another bomb pot here. This time it's seven ways, $20 each. I'm on the button with Jack-5 offsuit and the flop comes King-5-5. Five five. So flop trips again in a bomb pot. Small blind bets, $15. Everyone folds to me and only I make the call. Turn comes a nine of spades and he bets $30. I raise it up this time to $110. He's tanking for a little while and ultimately folds. So no huge action here, but I do take down another bomb pot. This next hand is perhaps the most fun one of the session. I raise it to $20 from the cutoff with 10 jack off suit and I get calls from the small blind and big blind. Three ways to a flop of queen eight three rainbow. So I flop the gutter ball to the nuts. Checks to me, I fire out $30 and only the small blind calls. Turn comes a three of clubs, small blind checks and I don't wanna take my foot off the pedal here. I continue the aggression for $100 and he makes the call. River comes a king of spades. He does check and there's a problem with this hand because of two main factors. One, I have nothing and the only way I can win is to bet. Two, this gentleman really wants to make the vlog and so I think it'll be tough to bluff him and get him off his hand. And I also don't have the best hand to bluff since I do block straight draws that I would like him to have. That said, I do unblock clubs and I do block some combos of Queen X. So hopefully I can get him off a hand that includes an eight in it. So I decide to fire out $225. He doesn't think too long and makes the call. So I table my missed straight draw and he shows three five of spades for trips to take it down. So had the turn not come at three, I think the continued aggression would have worked on my part, but happy to have lost to a vlog supporter at least. Next hand is a straddle pot, low jack and high jack limp. I raise it to $55 from the button with five seven of spades and only the big blind calls. Heads up to a flop of ace king king good range spot here so when he checks it i decide to fire out 60 dollars. he makes the call turn comes a queen of hearts and he just opened jams for 350 dollars. can't continue of course and i release my hand this next hand has a straddle pot cutoff raises to 30 dollars, and i've got ace king off suit on the button and i three bet it to 105 dollars. he makes the call heads up to a flop of ace five deuce rainbow so i flop top pair top kicker when he checks, I decide to check it back for deception. Turn comes a seven of spades, and when he checks, I fire out $140, and he makes the call. River comes a five of hearts, so a good run out, especially since spades brick out, and it provides me some bluffs to have in my range. When he checks, I fire a more polarized sizing of $340, hoping to get a call from non-believing hands such as pocket jacks and pocket queens that ideally do not have spades in them. And in the event that he has ace queen, I hope to just cool him off here. He does tank for a while, but he's a very good thinking player. And after some deliberation, he sniffs it out correctly and folds his hand. Okay. And the next hand, I raise it to $20 from the cutoff with ace deuce of clubs and both of the blinds call. Three ways to a flop of ace king jack monotone all hearts. Action checks through. Turn comes a five of clubs. Action checks to me, I fire out $40, primarily for equity denial. Small blind calls and big blind folds. Heads up to a river, which comes a queen of hearts. So a 10 of hearts is a royal, which at this property pays $500. He checks and my pair just shouldn't be good here that often. Most hands that continue should have made at least two pair by this river. So when he checks, I decide to turn my hand into a bluff and I fire out a bet of $120. He's in the tank for quite a while. And after he counts out the chips, he decides to let it go. So good result here. The next hand is a straddle pot. I raise it to $35 from the button with four five of diamonds. Small blind puts in a three bet to $105. We're playing pretty deep at over 1200 effective. And I have a hand that plays decently well in position, particularly since I think he's three betting top end value. And with that, my hand shouldn't have any interlocking equity in this spot. So I decide to make the call. We go heads up to a flop of 998 with two spades. So I completely whiff, and after he fires out $100, I just have to let it go. As mentioned, we are playing with the straddle on most of the time. And in this next hand, I actually forget to straddle, and I raise it to $35 from the under the gun position with ace queen off suit. The table gives me a little bit of a jab about it, but they're ultimately understanding. 
get calls from the hijack and the big blind. Three ways to a flop of King Jack four rainbow. Checks to me, I fire out $40 and both players fold. This next one is the hand of the night. It's a straddle pot, there are two limps and I'm in the small blind with pocket aces. I raise it to $75 and the straddler and middle position limper call. Three ways to a flop of 10, six, five rainbow. I decide to C bet it for $150, straddler tank calls and middle positions in the tank for quite a while. And he ultimately jams for $700. I rejam for around a thousand. The straddler quickly folds and we go to a run out which comes a 10 of spades and a jack of spades. Middle position tables, nine ten of diamonds. So get really dirtied here to lose the biggest pot of the evening. One more interesting hand to note, the first to act limps in a straddle pot. I raise it to $45 from the cutoff with jack eight of clubs and only the under the gun calls. Heads up to a flop of jack six deuce rainbow. And this hand is pretty interesting because I'm up against a player I think that is a bit nearer to poker. And he was just trying to have a good time and he actually was announcing his hand. And he told me that he had pocket seven. So not really sure what to make of it other than to take his word and believe that he was honest. And flopping top pair here, I decide to bet $50 and he makes the call. Turn comes a deuce of clubs, so I pick up additional equity. He checks, I fire out $115, and he makes the call. The river comes in eight of diamonds, so I make two pair. Shouldn't make too much of a difference though, as he continues to announce that he has pocket sevens and will call anything. So when he checks, I fire out $300. He pretty quickly makes the call. I table my hand, and he's looking at his hand for quite a while, so I'm expecting a bit of a slow roll potentially. But after he does that for a bit, he does fold his hand. So take this strange hand down. All right, so that wraps it up for all of the notable hands I was able to capture for tonight. Started off pretty strong, was up in the neighborhood of $600. And then unfortunately after that aces hand, I was stuck around a thousand. Then was able to win some back from the jack eight suited hand. But after that just went on a long period of being card dead. And there were a couple of spots that I didn't capture and I'll spare you the details, but Took some very rough beats, one of which I was a 90% favorite and the other one was an 80% favorite. So both of those did not work out in my favor per the run out. And unfortunately I was in the game for piles, 3,500 and I cash out 1,002. So pretty whopping loss to wrap up an otherwise fun day. A lot of interesting spots today and just uh, got to see a little bit of everything. Bomb pots, bluffs, value bets. All sorts of crazy things that happened today. So that part was fun. So yeah, I had a session pretty similar to this recently in terms of the result. The difference is that in that one session where I lost, I actually made quite a few mistakes that I wasn't proud of, but I was able to rectify in sessions going forward. Tonight was tough because I thought I made pretty good decisions overall, but the cards just weren't in my favor. And that's the part of poker that can be discouraging at times. You may feel that you're making good decisions in a session or in multiple sessions and still end up losing. And it's important to just be honest with the whole decision-making process, see if there were things you could have done better and just live with that. You know, the results are what they are. And hopefully as long as you continue to make good decisions in the long run, all of the luck and variance will balance out. So that's the way I'm gonna to try to look at this situation. Not ideal again to have a losing session like this, but gonna try to bounce back. That's all you can really do in these situations. Similar to the last big losing session, I do wanna end this video on a positive note. I really appreciate everyone tuning into the content as of late and bumping up the subscriber numbers and just meeting a ton of you really nice people at Lucky Chances. So tremendously grateful for that as we head towards the holiday season. Uh, lots to be thankful for. So just wanna make sure to end things on a positive note despite a pretty crappy session. And with that, I'll see you all on the next one. Oh,